Reach Attack Simulation, Attack IQ with Cisco Secure Endpoint, Bloodhound Ingester Execution. We're going to do this one in audit mode. All right, let's jump over to our endpoint. Let's double check what policy is in place. We can see we are full protect policy. Now, again, like we've seen before, we want to be an audit. So let's go ahead and move that asset into the audit policy group. Go ahead and grab that endpoint, move to group. And there we are. Let's go ahead and move that. And let's go ahead back to our host. Let's make sure that we get an update for policy here. Let's go ahead and check and make sure that we have the audit policy in place. And there it is, it's connected. Now, Windows Defender will turn on automatically. So again, if we wanna run this in audit mode and see what Secure Endpoint does, let's go ahead and disable Microsoft's real-time protection. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not part of a domain here, so this is gonna error out, but we're still gonna discover some activity. In a real environment, we would probably be domain joined to see the ultimate outcome, but you get the idea here. We're in attack IQ, let's go back to the setup here and let's have a look at the scenario that we're leveraging with this Bloodhound ingester execution. Let's go ahead and go to detail. And here it just talks a little bit about analyzing the relationship between Active Directory entities, can reveal a pass that can be exploited. The Bloodhound uses graph theory to reveal the hidden and often unintended relationships within in Active Directory. The goal here is to understand Active Directory and some weaknesses so us as the adversary can take advantage of it. All right, let's look at parameters. You can see here, we can set our domain, LDAP user and password. We're not gonna do this here again. If you wanna run the full test, uh, please do. But uh, this is just to give you an idea of how we can test some of our tooling. There's models and then we go over to detection information. You can see the SHAs. Again, it, it advises you that endpoint uh, protection and detection response capabilities are certainly valuable. Here's MITRE attack framework and the techniques and sub techniques that are gonna be involved here. All right, let's go ahead and hit continue. And you can see there's no direct integrations for this particular scenario. Let's go ahead and run it. All right, so it's started. Let's go ahead and jump back to secure endpoint. Let's go to events. And at the top here, we can see our last update that we just pushed. That's from the protect policy to the audit policy. Remember, we're not preventing anything here. We're just auditing. Now, I think we can go ahead and reload here. We should see some activity, at least at this point. And look at that, we do. Uh, we can see sharphound.exe. We can see there's a couple of tactics that were triggered. Um, you can see very similar to what we've talked about before, because we have the agent on attack IQ, there, there's gonna be some transfer of data, ingress tooling and stuff like that. So that's kind of neat. Let's go ahead and look at this Bloodhound IOC. Again, it talks about the command line associated with Bloodhound, was detected. It's a tool to explore Active Directory trust relationships. We can see the tactic here, discovery and the technique domain trust discovery. So it was detected. And here's another cloud-based IOC saying a known malicious file was executed. This increases the likelihood of successful breach and this event should be properly investigated. And you can see execution was, was in fact uh, triggered here. Let's go ahead into device trajectory. This gives us a timeline of what took place. You can see here's a cloud-based IOC. That's the execution that we saw that's malicious. And here's that Bloodhound IOC. Again, we can see that based on some of the command line arguments that were uh, analyzed here. And you can see discovery was the tactic and technique was domain trust discovery. If we go back a little bit in, in, in the timeline here, we can see where the tooling pulled down uh, that Bloodhound executable or sharphound.exe. And we can see the details around it. We can see that it wasn't quarantined. It is flagged in audit mode only um, and obviously would ne not prevent uh, this particular activity from taking place. Now you might say, why would you ever run in audit mode? Well, probably wouldn't in most scenarios, but Think about operational environments. You might want to run in audit mode in those locations because of the risk of mitigating um, something may impact the environment. Let's jump back to attack IQ. You can see it, it did error out. Now, the reason why it erred out, even though we did capture some of the activities from a MITRE perspective, 
it did error out and that's because we didn't actually set up the domain. In fact, that host that I ran it on was not a domain joined host. So it just says unable to determine user's domain, please specify the domain with the slash slash domain flag. We certainly could have entered that information in. Now, if we scroll down, look at observable details, we can see here the uh, sharphound.exe, the SHA-256 associated with it, you know, the object number one, two, and three. We can use that in our analysis. We met the objective here. We were able to at least detect some activity of Bloodhound being executed in the environment.